Something's coming. The movie begins in 1901 in India, as a man named Jahangir enters a shack in the forest to confront a jinn sitting, waiting for him, and he starts to recite an Arabic prayer to establish a layer of protection for himself as he nears. The man has only one request the release of a girl being kept hostage by the jinn. The jinn levitates in the air and turns and starts moving toward him. He says they have this body buried in the name of his enemy, so now belongs to him. Suddenly a storm starts there and the jinn faints, but as Jahangir checks him, he attacks him. However, before he could kill him, Jahangir breaks a bottle of holy water on his head, and the jinn swears vengeance and states that he will slaughter all of his bloodlines from one generation to another. 113 years later, Sean and Jasmine are a happy couple living in Michigan. Sean gets a delivery, an early birthday present with no name or address. Inside they find a note and a VHS. Only then Sean sees a shadow outside the window and Jasmine tells him that it has been there for the last two days, and she thinks it's just a cardboard cutter. Now the next day, Sean tells his wife about the promotion at his job, and that he thinks they are ready to have their first child. But Jasmine tells him that it's impossible for her to have children and Sean gets shocked and upset hearing this. He watches that tape in his office and the tape was recorded by his father, with the message that strange things might start happening to him, and he must seek out the helpers who will get him ready to fight the unknown forces. His father also states that if this tape has managed to reach him, that means he has failed to defeat these forces and protect his family, and that Sean will now need to prevail in this battle to ensure the survival of his family. Now Sean is sitting in the car to go home when he hears some noises from outside but he can't see anything. And then a jinn takes Jasmine's name from behind him. When he gets home, he finds the furniture stacked up and his wife missing. He calls the police and while they were questioning him, Jasmine arrives. She tells him that she went for a walk and Sean apologizes to the police officers. After they leave, Sean tells her that the door was locked and there is no forced entry. Now that night Sean sees the furniture scattered again and he immediately calls Jasmine outside. He tells her that he came outside just to drink orange juice and found this. Only then do their eyes fall on that shadow which is moving this time and suddenly a light blasts into their home. They both immediately come outside the house where Sean gets a call telling him to get to the cathedral at Road Long Lake. The couple meets Gabriel at the cathedral who tells them that they are safe in this place. Sean asks him how he knows them. Only then Father Westhoff arrives and Jasmine asks them what's going on. Gabriels tells him that he is the one who sent the tape to him. But Sean doesn't believe this. Gabriel then shows them a trick and explains the concept of jinn to them. He tells them three were created in the beginning. Man is made of clay. Angels are made of light. And the third, made of fire called the jinn. And that's what coming for them. Sean asks them why they are after them. To which Father says within the jinn there is a prophecy and very few of them know about it but his great-grandfather did, and because he is part of their prophecy, jinns are afraid of him. Father then gives him a dagger and asks him to use it when he gets into trouble. He also tells him that he is safe within the wall of any house of God. Now while they are leaving, he tells him to ask walkers about Father Westhoff. Sean goes to his adoptive parents and tells them the jinns are after them. His parents get shocked to hear this and tell him that the priest named Westhoff who arranged for them to adopt him told them something about a verse in the jinn. Knowing all this, Sean sets out to find the people who could help him, but Jasmine tries to stop him and suggests they can run and hide it. They are then attacked by an unseen force that takes Jasmine, and when Sean goes after her to save her, the unseen force lifts him in the air, and then the jinn appears before him and tells him the sons of Adam will fall, the jinn will rise, and this world will be theirs again. But Sean attacks him with that dagger causing the jinn to disappear from there. He then goes to Gabriel and Father Westhoff and tells them everything that happened. He says they told him they would fear him, but it didn't seem afraid. Father tells him about the text called the Jinn Scroll that was lost for a long time. It said that in a battle between man and Jinn, one shall emerge more powerful than both, and will lead the world into a golden age. Later, Sean sets out with Gabriel to see the only man who can help them. On the way, he tells him about a sect of Jinns known as Shaitan. The rest of the jinn are afraid of them as they are very powerful, 
but men with a strong will, heart, and mind can sense them. The strongest can fight them and destroy them. However, the last one lived a hundred years ago. His great-grandfather Jahangiraman. He tries to save a girl who has been taken by the same Shaden that's after him. Gabriels then takes him to Ollie, who says Sean looks just like his father. He asks him to sit near him and shows him a vision and tells him that his wife Jasmine is carrying his son. The Jinns keep coming generation after generation looking for the prophesied one. There are only a few bloodlines in the world that can fulfill the prophecy. He tells Gabriel that Sean must take the test and pass the chilla. He then with his supernatural power sends him to the other dimension of the world and tells him he will need to move between them in order to pass the chilla. Then there he also encounters the jinn who tries to scare him. But Ollie tells him not to let fear overtake him. If he does, he will end up like him. He has failed his chilla and let them into his mind, and they have tormented him ever since. As he tried to stop them from coming to him, he reveals that he is his uncle, the other son of Jahangir. Ollie senses that the jinns have been spying on them and are there to attack them, and he asks them to get out of there. As they flee, Gabriel fights the jinns and after coming out of the building, he asks Sean not to turn back, no matter what he sees. After he leaves, it is revealed that Gabriel is also a jinn. He uses his power to stop the jinns and start destroying them one by one, but then he notices that Sean left his car keys inside the building, so he uses his powers to get the keys to him, and sacrifices himself for Sean. Later, when Sean reaches Father Westaf, he tells him that Gabriel was also a jinn, one of the few who work for humanity. He is the one who brought him to him when his parents were killed. He says he only has two choices now. Either he can stay protected within the walls of the church, or he can end this. The chill can allow him to get close enough to the Shaden. He can go where they go, see what they see, and do what they do. He tells him the blade is made from the metal forged in Jin Fire, one of a few like the pendant on his necklace. It doesn't fully exist in their dimension, but this can cut into theirs. He tells him that Chilla is a physical, mental, and spiritual test of fear unique to you because they arise within you. From your own memories and darkest thoughts, he says he will need Zamzam water, holy water from the Mecca, that saved the son of Abraham. But for Shade and Jin, it is like poison. Once he recites the verse exactly, he is going to teach it to him. The chilla will begin, and they will come. They will use everything he fears to keep him from completing his chilla. If he awakes from his chilla with his mind intact, he will know what to do next. Sean chooses a secluded place to perform chilla, but a jinn appears there in front of him in his form. The jinn then starts moving towards him, saying he will hunt him down till the day of judgment. Sean runs and creates a protection circle, and the jinn disappears. He then starts the chilla and starts chanting verses. And during this, Jasmine reaches there. She tells him she escaped and Father Westhoff told her where he is. She asks him to stop this and look into her eyes, and only then Jin attacks her. But Sean continues to chant the verses and it is revealed that it's Jin in the form of Jasmine who tells him he is a coward just like his father. Soon after, Sean reaches into another dimension and finds Jin in his form. He says everyone he loved is gone, and just as in the beginning, there is only him. They could offer him so much more and he could be a king with a thousand heirs from Thousand Jasmine. Sean says he wants his Jasmine and asks him where is she. The Jin says there is a war coming, and neither man nor Jin could stop it. Meanwhile, the Jin comes to Ollie as well, but he reveals that his chilla ends now, and tonight, they all fall. Here Sean comes out of the circle completing his chilla, and while he is leaving, the Jin says he will never see him, he showed mercy, and offered him power but now he will give him death. Sean drives away from there and the jinn starts chasing him. On the other hand, Father Westhoff is praying when the jinn reaches there, and Father tells him that this fight is between their master and Sean alone. Here Sean reaches his home where he finds Ollie already there. The jinn tries to enter the house, so Sean plays the verses in his home studio, but jinn enters and appears in front of them. He tries to get Sean but Ollie attacks him and tries to stop him, and Sean throws them some water on him. But this does not affect him and he knocks Ollie down. He then starts moving towards Sean to kill him and grabs his neck to make him unconscious. Sean then wakes up in other dimensions where he sees Jin with a baby in his hand, which then disappears. Sean takes out his dagger and runs to attack Jin but he knocks him down. He then starts tormenting him, but then Sean uses his power to get the dagger and stabs him with it. He then attacks him and finally defeats the Jin by breaking Zamzam water bottle on his head. Then in his dimension, 
He overpowers the djinn and jumps out of the window into a swimming pool mixed with Zamzam water and defeats him here as well. Gabriel then comes there and takes him out of the pool and wakes him up using his powers. They then see djinns from different dimensions coming there and Sean prepares to fight them. He kills one of them as a warning to the others and asks them where is his wife. And as he moves toward them, they all leave from there. Gabriel then brings him to the church where Sean finds Jasmine is safe there. He asks Father Westliff about Gabriel, to which he says his job is to protect him and his son, no matter what the cost. A year later, Sean, Jasmine, and Ollie are at the apartment with the couple's new baby boy. The baby drops his pacifier, and as Ollie and Sean both bend down to pick it up, it moves to the baby's mouth without being touched. They look at each other, knowing that the child has the power to defeat the djinn once and for all. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.